Welcome. This is Brian Buchanan and Jean Deschamps from the University of Alberta Department of Critical Care Medicine. This tutorial will review the basics of color Doppler assessment in focused echocardiography in the ICU. Basic color Doppler assessment for severe valvular regurgitation is a common reason for echocardiography in the ICU, and the ACCP accordingly highlights it as a core component for basic critical care echocardiography competency. This lecture assumes a degree of comfort in identifying the views necessary for valvular assessment. Of course, this is covered in another tutorial in this video series. Color Doppler asks the 2D imaging in the visualization of rapidly moving elements that are not processed in 2D or B mode imaging. It is obtained by selecting the color option on the ultrasound machine. The Doppler effect forms the basis of color Doppler. As an object emitting sound is approaching a fixed object, the sound waves will be compressed to higher frequencies, which represents a positive Doppler shift. The reverse is true, as an object emitting a sound is moving away from a fixed object. The frequency shift is what is interpreted in order to assess speed and velocity. In cardiac echo, Doppler shift is based on ultrasound wave interaction with red blood cells. Color flow Doppler is a visual representation of both speed and direction of Doppler shift. Speed and direction are integrated into velocity, which represents vectorized speeds of Doppler shift. The intensity is mapped to color, either positive or red if going towards the probe, or negative or blue if going away from the probe. The legend to assess intensity indicates velocity. In case of doubts, remember the acronym BART, blue away, red forwards. It is important to remember what valve you're examining, in what cardiac cavity, in what phase of the cardiac cycle you're in. In this clip, aortic re regurg is shown as red because the aorta is posterior to the left ventricle and the flow is going towards the left ventricle. If your aorta was anterior to the left ventricle, and in other views such as in TE, the aortic regurgitation would look blue instead. The Doppler signal is influenced by multiple factors, which explains why some parts of the aorta and mesenteric vessels are not showing signal. If you look at the equation, Doppler shift involves an angle, that's cosine 90 degrees equals zero. Logically, if ultrasound waves hit red blood cells that are traveling perpendicular to the beam, there will be no Doppler shift, hence you'll see no velocity change. Its key lesson to remember is to assess for valve abnormalities in multiple angles and views to ensure you're not missing perpendicular flow abnormalities. In this uh, image, as the flow is going towards the top of the aortic arch, uh, the color intensity drops and becomes darker until it becomes black. There is definite blood flow in those regions, but the Doppler shift cannot be picked up because it is perpendicular to the ultrasound beam. In extremes of velocity are in areas where there is significant multidirectional turbulence. The velocity perceived may exceed what can be processed by the Doppler signal. This is called aliasing. At this point, the signal then, sh then demonstrates a mix of the highest positive and negative velocities and becomes whitish. This is because sending a signal requires the probe to stop sending the signal and listen. This represents the pulse repetition frequency. If your signal is going faster than the frequency at which you're sampling, the machine is unable to track the red blood cell mass and will miss some of the movements. In a similar fashion, think about a car wheel. The spokes appear to be going counterclockwise because the, the time you resample, the spoke has moved so far clockwise that it appears to have only moved slightly counterclockwise. Color Doppler functions by sending multiple short pulses across the region of interest. Every pulse sent needs a waiting period in which you are listening for sound waves back and you are not sampling. The wider your box, the longer it takes. The ultrasound does not do processing in areas you do not target. In summary, the factors affecting color Doppler include size of the orifice, the pressure differential across chambers, direction of flow, and of course, technical factors. Assessment of severity of valve disease is exceedingly complex. We will teach only basic principles, and ultimately, if you believe your patient has a severe valve disease, this really requires an urgent referral for comprehensive echocardiography and cardiology consultation. We will go through all of these elements demonstrated here by examining the most frequent valve examined for regurgitation, the mitral valve. This uh, illustrates an important point in valvular regurgitation, coaptation of the leaflets. Coaptation represents the uh, integrity of two leaflets well opposed together, preventing reflux of blood into the left atrium. It depends on three major features. One is annular geometry. 
This depends on the ventricular size and atrial size in relation to one another, as well as wall motion. Number two is leaflet integrity. The leaflets are unusually affected by perforations, but this can happen in pathologies such as endocarditis. Two is leaflet integrity. This is an unusual problem to have holes in your valve, but is typically found in pathologies such as endocarditis. Three is the apparatus formed by the chordae, papillary muscles, and wall motion and their effect on uh, those features. This is typically affected by a combination of ventricular dilatation and wall motion abnormalities. In this case, this diagram illustrates a variety of pathologies that can happen to the mitral valve, including prolapse, a flail leaflet, and coaptation failure, and even systolic anterior motion of the mitral valve that prevents adequate coaptation. Because echo represents 2D cuts, the defect may be very small in one area on 2D, but very large when added up. A color Doppler is thus used to assess the extent of the defect that cannot be well quantified on 2D. On this TE of much of an infective endocarditis, notice that if you freeze the image, you can see a visible gap between the leaflets. This essentially makes this severe MR. Key teaching point is that a visible 2D abnormality generally trumps the color Doppler jet size and is severe by default. Additionally, in these situations, the hole may be large enough that there is equilibration of pressures across the cavity. No pressure equals no flow, and no flow equals no color Doppler velocities to be mapped. This is an apical three-chamber image where we can see the left atrium, left ventricle, and outflow tract. The jet area in the receiving cavity can be used to quantify the severity of regurgitation, with increasing size correlating with increasing severity. The caveat to this is that the size of the receiving cavity needs to be counted for, such as in the case of severe mitral stenosis with probably moderate MR in a severely enlarged left atrium. As such, this likely represents significant mitral regurg, regardless of the degree of left atrium that is filled by the jet. The Coend effect represents the transformation of kinetic energy, including velocity, into thermal vibratory energy when the jet hits another structure. It will make significant jets appear much narrower than they actually would be otherwise if centrally directed in the left atrium. One trick in this situation is to assess how far the jet goes along the left atrial wall. If it reaches the back wall, it is likely in the severe range. If it wraps around back to the contralateral wall, it is severe. All the previous markers show pitfalls of color assessment, mainly due to the receiving chamber characteristics. PISA and vena contracta are two markers that are less pressure dependent, but technically more challenging. In the case of PISA, for a fixed pressure gradient across the valve, the larger the hole, the more flow can go through during each ventricular contraction. Thus, in a round orifice, the velocity is maximal at the defect and drops off in an onion layer pattern or concentric shells of progressively diminishing velocities. Hence, the larger the hole, the bigger the onion shell. Absence of flow convergence usually indicates mild MR in this situation, and you would not see such an onion shell or concentric shell pattern. Vena contracta is shown here, represented by the two arrows. It is the narrowest portion of the colored jet and shows up as laminar or non-turbulent flow. It is a correlation to orifice size and degree of severity of MR. The vena contracta is, can be quite technically challenging to obtain because it requires to find an area of flow that is laminar and that is the narrowest portion of the jet. It usually is below that onion shell of concentric shell variation. But if your orifice is not perfectly round, it can be very hard to find that narrow portion. Notice that the increasing blood pressure, or increasing gradient from left ventricle to left atrium, leads to a significant increase in size and length of the MR jet, as velocity. However, the radius does not appear to be as influenced. Notice we can see here on these two images, the left apical four-chamber, and on the right, a, a transesophageal two-chamber approach, we can see the differences in jet size. On the left side, we see a relatively small mitral regurgitant jet with a small vena contracta and a small jet area regurgitating into left atrium. On the right, on the TE view, with the left atrium in the near field, we can see a very large jet area with that coanda effect with that eccentric jet plus with a very large vena contracta. This gives a very gross assessment of valvular regurgitant, regurgitation severity. All the methods we talked about can be used in aortic valve assessment. 
Usually in this situation, they are most reliable in the parasternal long axis view. The vena contracta is such a measure that can be done in this view. It can be, however, quite difficult to identify, but a small, as in less than 0.3 centimeters, or non-measurable vena contracta, means mild AR. A large vena contracta, or more than 0.6 centimeters, means severe. An easier and also reasonable assessment is the jet width divided by the LVOT width, as in how much of the regression the jet occupies the LVOT space. A jet that occupies a small proportion of the LVOT, less than 25%, represents mild AR, while a jet that represents more than 65% represents severe AR. In this clip, you see a thin, linear, regurgitant jet in keeping with central mild AR. In the case of the aortic valve, the equivalent of the LV abnormalities is aortic root abnormalities. Any dilatation of the aortic root will lead to central aortic regurg. Other abnormalities include cusp perforation, prolapse, or impaired motion, usually leading to eccentric jets. This clip shows severe AR. You notice that the jet width of the LVOT is very high, suggesting significant aortic regurg. Eccentric jets for aortic regurgitation are notoriously difficult to assess and very prone to a Quando effect equivalence and underestimation. As compared to mitral regurg, aortic regurg is particularly prone to under overestimation of severity by pressure differentials. This is often due to under or over appreciation of jet length into the left ventricle. A very hypertensive patient will lead to an increased gradient from the aorta to the LV, leading to significant jet length and area into the left ventricle. Severe AR may lead to equilibration of the pressures in a small and short duration of aortic regurgitation jet. The width and vena contracta are, however, unlikely to be affected. As you have seen and heard, basic color Doppler assessment of valvular regurgitation is a complex skill with some basic principles that can be learned and used as long as the operator is aware of the basic concepts that underline it. Thank you for listening.